a little sour, a little sweet, a little rotten. Kombucha, the cilantro of beverages. Kombucha originated in China over 2,000 years ago. Described as a miracle elixir, kombucha has racked up tons of health claims, from revitalizing energy to detoxifying blood, reducing inflammation, introducing healthy bacteria to the gut, and even curing cancer. But what is the evidence behind these claims? Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable. I'm Dr. Lara. Kombucha is a fermented tea beverage. It's made by adding a blob of microbes to sweetened tea and letting it sit for about a week. Though this blob looks like a disgusting slimy lily pad, it's actually a remarkable product of bacteria and yeast. This blob goes by many names. Tea mushroom, mother, or SCOBY, which stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. The yeast ferments sugar to produce alcohol and carbon dioxide, which creates bubbles. The bacteria use this alcohol and broken down sugar to produce acids, which give the kombucha that sour vinegary flavor. The bacteria also produce a stringy compound called cellulose, which creates layers of the blob. This blob floats in the kombucha, exposing the bacteria to oxygen, which they need to live. What does science say about kombucha's health effects? In a three-year-long animal study, daily kombucha drinking significantly increased longevity in mice compared to just plain water. So there must be something healthy in that fermented brew. Most of the health claims about kombucha center around it being a probiotic, meaning that you're consuming actual microbes. The World Health Organization defines a probiotic as live microorganisms which, when administered in adequate amounts, confer a health benefit on the host. The theory underlying how probiotics could benefit the host is that live microbes travel all the way down the GI tract to take up residence in the gut to help support a healthy microbiome. The microbiome comprises the 100 trillion microbes around our body that are playing important roles in helping keep us healthy. Check out my microbiome video here. Let's look at kombucha through the lens of a probiotic. Yes, kombucha definitely contains live microbes. Studies show a mixture of bacteria and yeast, though the specific types vary between kombuchas. Do these kombucha microbes make it down to stick around in the gut? Science says, I don't know. There have been no studies addressing this question. However, it's actually pretty unlikely that kombucha microbes could survive in the intestine. Microbes that thrive in the blob evolve to live in kombucha, a very acidic fluid exposed to the air. This is very different from the gut. The intestine is much less acidic and it's anaerobic, meaning there's no air. The kombucha microbes would essentially be suffocated in the intestine. Now, do these microbes provide any health benefits to the host? Since it's unlikely that the kombucha microbes are sticking around in the gut, I initially thought, no, how could they? But another hypothesis is that when the microbes are fermenting the kombucha, they're producing metabolites, and these metabolites could be beneficial. Think of these metabolites as microbe poop. When the bacteria and yeast are fermenting sugar, they produce metabolite poop, like B vitamins, antioxidants, and acids. Studies in animals and cells in the dish have demonstrated that some of these kombucha metabolites may have health-promoting effects. In the lab, kombucha is antimicrobial. Bathing disease-causing bacteria with kombucha inhibited their growth. A handful of small animal studies have demonstrated that kombucha reduces blood sugar, improves cholesterol, heals stomach ulcers, and reduces oxidative stress, all healthy outcomes. Interestingly though, most of these improvements were also seen with just plain tea. One kombucha metabolite that could be beneficial is glucuronic acid, a type of acid that is produced by some kombucha bacteria. Our body naturally produces glucuronic acid, and it's found in some fruits and vegetables like broccoli and citrus fruit. The liver and kidneys use glucuronic acid when detoxifying chemicals from the blood so that we can pee them out. Some studies in animals exposed to pollutants showed that drinking kombucha enhanced detoxification. Another study showed that glucuronic acid supplements slowed down cancer cell growth in mice that were exposed to a cancer-causing chemical. So it seems like there could be some health benefits to drinking micro poop in kombucha. But there's still a huge gap in research that is very relevant for you, human. None of these health benefits have been studied in humans. As of July 2018, there are no studies investigating kombucha drinking in humans. Even the animal studies to date have been small and haven't been reproduced, so we don't know how consistent the findings are. 
Should you drink kombucha? Here's a few other perspectives to consider when deciding. Generally, kombucha seems to be pretty safe for most people. There have been a few case reports of infection, metabolic acidosis, and even death associated with kombucha drinking, but these have been attributed to kombucha brewed in unsanitary conditions and drinking really high volumes by people who are already very sick. Based on these case reports, the CDC recommends that healthy people drink no more than four ounces of kombucha per day, which is about one quarter of most standard bottles. Due to the potential risk for contamination, it's probably best for anyone who is pregnant, breastfeeding, or immunocompromised to avoid kombucha. If you choose to drink kombucha from the store, check the Nutrition Facts panel to see how much added sugar it contains. Reducing consumption of sugar from beverages is a really important healthy lifestyle behavior. The amount of sugar depends on how much sugar has been fermented by the microbes and whether any additional sugar or fruit juice has been added to change the flavor. While you're reading that label, you may notice that GT Dave's kombucha contains 100% pure love. Dear GT Dave, a friendly warning to you that you may want to be on the lookout for a letter from the FDA. In October of 2017, the FDA told Neshoba Brook Bakery that they can bake their goods with love, but love is not a permissible ingredient. Personally, I drink kombucha on occasion, but I find it too expensive to justify drinking all the time. Though I don't think it's an all-healing elixir, it is definitely a healthier option than soda, and it has a complex flavor profile like some fancy beers with far less alcohol. I doubt that science will ever support all the wild health claims, but I am compelled by the hypothesis that the micro-metabolites could be beneficial. I hope that there will be some well-designed human studies investigating whether regular kombucha consumption offers any health benefits. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Have you tried kombucha? Let me know your thoughts on this fermented tea in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.